G'day guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Sandy Tracks Fishing. So this episode, going to be announcing the winner of all those lures that I was going to be giving away in my last video. And also, I'm going to give you my top three points, my top three pointers of how to help you guys catch more fish. So stay tuned, hope you guys enjoy the episode, hit that like, hit that subscribe button and chuck in some comments, questions, anything, and I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. All right, so number three, all about location, location, location. Now, there's a few different key factors in each point that I'm gonna quickly run through. I'll try and get through it as quick as possible so I don't bore you guys. So yeah, location, location, location. Now, you can be, there's several different spots that you can fish around. Um, land base and also boating so for majority of probably my watches I will base these three pointers of how to catch more fish with uh, land basing in mind um, everybody can land base fish and not everybody has a boat so we will base it on land based fishing and it can be covered with uh, having a boat as well so obviously if you've got a boat you can cover more water a lot more locations a lot less fish water and you're going to catch more fish obviously but if you are land based then you know we'll just um, base it all on that so first point of location now you've got to target target species what do you guys want to catch um, you've got to understand what species you are targeting and where they live now there's no point of chasing mangrove jack and throwing a soft plastic or a hard body out into the middle of the river and not catching a mangrove jack. You do have to understand where fish live, what they're doing at the time of year, and also what bait they're going to be eating, or lure. Uh, not much of a bait for shows, so this would be also based around lures. So, target species. If you're gonna target brim, obviously brim are pretty much anywhere. You can chase them on the flats around the weed beds where the flathead lay. You can chase them in deep gutters, harbors, rock walls, marinas, anywhere there is uh, fish clean down se sections. If you fill it in your fish, you wash it down, the guts, everything goes down in the water. There'll be tons of brim there. Pretty much brim, uh, AKA right at the sea, garbage eater, whatever you guys want to call them. They are good fun on light tackle, and if you are struggling to catch fish, I always go back to my brim fishing. When you pick up a decent brim on four pound gear, it's actually really, really fun, and it can make up some pretty fun sessions. So, if you're going to be targeting flathead land base in your local systems, you need to be keyed into where the sand flats and drop offs are. This can be quite difficult depending where your local is or even if you're traveling a little bit. Best time and the best way of targeting flathead, um, looking for those sand flats and also drop offs is obviously low tide. So you want to go down to a big sand flat on low tide and if it's a new area just have a walk around and just have a look on the sand. If you can see heaps of flathead lays, if there's heaps of bait flicking around in the shallows, then it's probably a really good, really good spot to target. I actually brought a coffee with me this time, so no beer, but coffee, close enough. So, like I said, you want to go down on the sand flat and look around for signs of flathead, signs for bait. And don't be afraid of shallow water fishing. Now, people, when I take them out flathead fishing, they are absolutely amazed of the, how shallow I will throw up, throw a lure up into. Now, if it's knee deep water and less, I will still be fishing that. A lot of the really big flatheads, especially in winter time, they'll start pushing right up into the shallows, sunning themselves in the shallows waters, and also chasing a lot of mullet. At the moment, the winter, just the start of winter, the mullet start to run. So obviously, the mullet love the warm water up in the shallows, and the big flathead will go up there and sit up in there and lay. So it's a really good time to be throwing really big soft plastics, swim baits, and also bent minnow surface lures. Pretty much anything that looks like a mullet up in the shallows, you're going to have a good chance of catching a really big flathead. Um, also, along rock walls, 
If there's a nice big drop off, it's a really good spot to target flathead as well. Sometimes big flathead lay can throw big plastics, deep vibes, that kind of thing. If there's a really big rock wall and it's a nice big gutter, what I would generally do is I would be casting up into the flow and let my lure come back down. And I'd start at the top of the system and I'd slowly work my way down over a couple of hours. Once you pinpoint a fish, you stay there and target that area for 15-20 minutes and then you can continue down. So many times people make the mistake of catching a flathead and going to another spot, another spot, another spot. What happens is with how I fish and how I've learned to fish, if I catch a little flathead, dinner sized flathead in one area, I will stay in that one spot and keep casting into that area. So we've got big flathead, one second. So we've got big girl flathead. And then what happens is all the little male flatheads will sit on top of her and around her. So if you've thrown your lure in, you've picked up one of these little guys, you throw in again, you pick up another one and another one, all of a sudden there's a really good chance that this big girl is going to eat. So just like any other species in the world, humans, fish, monkeys, everything, we all like to hang around the big girls. Um, so if you find one or two flathead in the area, stay there guys because there's a really good chance that they're hanging around a really big female and that's the girl you want to catch. That's the photo you want, that's the Instagram post you want. But also remember, take care of the big girls, they're the breeders. Um, now there's been a little bit iffy on breeding sizes. Personally I think anything over pushing up to that meter, I think it is infertile. Um, so generally I catch fish up to about 50 centimeters. Now 50 centimeters for me is a very very good eating size. Um, for me and my mum, you know, one and a, and a half flat egg can do us for dinner, throw in some veggies, that kind of a thing. Um, anything bigger than that, I always let go. I believe in my theory and the things that I've read, anything in about 60 to about 80 centimeters are the breeders. Now the real big girls I think 80 plus, 90 plus, I think they're infertile. I don't think they breed. I could be 100% wrong but I don't think they breed. Now obviously you don't want to kill a beautiful big flathead that's that big um, and it's absolutely amazing watching the big girl swim away to even get bigger and bigger and maybe a chance of catching them again. You always get those tales of people catching them over a meter. Um, my biggest is 94 centimeters, and I'm still trying to find that meter plus girl. Um, all right, so that's basically flathead talk. Now, obviously, mangrove jack fishing around where I live, down in the northern river, rivers, it, they are not as abundant as up north. Now, when you get one down here, it is pretty exciting. It's very special because, like I said, they're not super thick down here. But my general rule is if I'm land based fishing I will be looking at rocky structure at the bottom of the run outside or the side of the run in. Just fishing jackal squirrels and hard body lures along rock walls. And the good thing if, if you're fishing that rock wall again where we just caught that big flathead, throw your jackal up into the current, horizontal to the rocks just outside the rock line and you just give it a slow crank through and the joys of the, the bib lures, it'll swim down, it'll, the bib will hit the rocks and then you just stop cranking, it'll lift up a bit and then you just keep continuing. So even though you feel like you're going to get a lot of snags, you actually don't. And if you do, stop, don't put any pressure on it and all you've got to do is walk the opposite direction up the wall and you just give it a light couple of twitches and 9 times out of 10, even though you're throwing expensive lures into the rocks, you will get them back. So mangrove jacks, Land based fishing is will push your limits, it is very hard because there's very limited spots that you can fish for them land based, but you're looking at rock walls, snags, pretty much anywhere that big broom will hang out as well, any kind of uh, wooden structure, trees, fallen, anything basically into the water, mangrove jacks will hang around, so very hard to target land base, unless you're on the Gold Coast, they seem to be everywhere, um, but yeah, that's pretty much where they, where those red guys hang out. Um, what else we got going on? So also, you got to look at the other key f uh, factors here. 
we got tide, wind, moon, air pressure. Now, for me, if I've got days off, I do look at all those types of things and I do make a general assumption of where I think a fish is gonna be and also where I'm going to enjoy myself out in the water. Now, if it's a super windy day, we'll circle that guy. If it's a super windy day, I don't wanna be out in my boat getting wet, having a really tough time trying to throw lures around. I'm gonna go try and find myself up in the creek, out of the wind, in a nice glass bay. And then I will start looking at tides. When I start going up into those tight creeks to get out of the wind. Obviously, I like to target the start of the run out. I'll fish the whole run out and then the start of the run in. Again, it depends what species you are looking at as well. And also, if there's been any rain in the area, there's a lot of key factors. But if I've got days off, I just want to go out and enjoy myself on the water. I'll look at the wind and go, wow, today's a windy day. I'm going to shoot up into the creek, go chase some brim, estuary perch, maybe lock onto a jack or something like that. Um, you know, land base, again, if I don't take my boat out, you can still do these things. Even though it is hard to find little spots up into the creeks, there are little land base opportunities that you guys can get out on. And then I'll just target the tide, okay? Um, it's a run outside, so I'll shoot up in the creek, out of the wind, hit that tide at the peak time, wait for that turn, and then time to go home. Um, what else we got? Moon and air pressure. Now, I don't generally look at that too often because if you get, generally most of us will have two days off. I get three days off because I'm very, very lucky. But generally, most people have two days off. Now, you're not, not going to go fishing because the moon isn't perfect, the air pressure isn't high. Now, basically, basically the, th the rule of thumb is higher the air pressure, the better the bite, the more active the fish are going to be. And generally, also around the full moon or the new moon, depending, again, what species you were chasing. If you're chasing barramundi in the dams, you want to be around that full moon period. Um, same with cod as well in the dams. But if you're just targeting estuary fish, now the moon and the air pressure, I don't think has a great deal to do with it. I think the wind and the tides definitely have more to do with it with them than the air pressure and the moon. Now the moon's not so big of a deal. Obviously the bigger the moon is the higher the tides. It comes in and goes out a lot faster. It makes it a little bit harder to fish. Um, around the full moon time, it's a really good time to throw prawn lures. As we know, the big tides push a lot of prawns into the system. So if you're fishing, if it's summertime, little surface MMD splash prawns, uh, BP50 eco gears, um, all that type of thing. Anything that looks like the prawns up in the shallows, you're gonna do pretty good. Um, okay, so that's probably it. Air pressure, like I said, I don't really look at it that much. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna go fishing because the air pressure's not great and the moon's not great. I've got two days off, I'm gonna go fishing. It might be a grind, I mightn't catch much, but you know what, I love fishing, I love getting out in the water, and what else are you gonna do? So you might as well go out and enjoy it. So. Air pressure, yeah, the higher the better, but if you're just going to go fishing, you're just going to go fishing. I think a lot of um, cod and barramundi, a lot of fish are very tough to, to get to bite. Um, even bass, if the air pressure is very, very low, um, she can be a bit of a grind. So if you've got the time, look in the future on your apps. I've got a couple of phone apps to do with the moon air pressure, tide, all of these factors combined. And then I will th have a think of what I want to fish for, when is the best time to do it, and try and line it up with my days off. Also, it's always good, everybody, it's always good to jump on Instagram, ask questions, I still do it. If I'm going to a new area, I'll ask the boys, you know, what's going on at the Port of Brisbane? Are the thread fin on? Um, I'll do so much research, Google it. You know, there is so much information on Google. Um, it'll give you the time of year, what laws to throw, what tides to um, target, everything like that. So, um, okay, and the lucky last about location, location, location is the time of year. Now, for me, coming into winter, the mullet starts to run. It's a very good time, like I said, to target the shallows for really big flathead. I will throw big swim baits around. Actually, give me one second. All right, we're back. So, like I said, when 
winter starts, the mullet starts to run. So it's a very good time to be throwing really big baits around for dewfish and also big flathead in the shallows. Now, I will, won't hesitate throwing big glide baits in the shallows for flathead and also big bent minnows, pretty much anything that looks like a mullet. Oh, goodness, dropping a lot of stuff today. Nice big Z-Man paddle tail. Obviously, if you target in that shallow water, you have to put a really, really light jig head on. And sometimes the hook's too short here, so you probably have to run a stinger treble. As long as that tail moves and it's got a nice slow flutter down, you're in, mate. So, yeah. So time of year, getting a little bit distracted. Time of year, so winter time, a lot of mullet run. Throw some big baits up into the shallows. It's patient fishing, but the rewards can be amazing. Also, a lot of um, dewfish start pushing up into the systems as well, targeting that colder water. They seem to be a bit more active um, and very good chance of catching them there. Um, summertime, I start to throw smaller profile lures around. I notice, at least in my local here, a lot more white baits start pushing up into the warmer waters and also a lot more prawns are a lot more active as well. So summertime, I generally, smaller profile lures, a lot of surface action because of that water, top water is gonna be a lot warmer and you target the low light periods, little splash prawns, sugar pens, walk the dog lures, all those types of things for brim, jack, flathead, pretty much anything that will take a surface lure. It's a very good time to target them. And if I'm throwing uh, little soft plastics around, I will throw up to about a three inch lure, but generally nothing too much bigger than that. Little Z-Man Slim Swims, uh, Munro's in the 2.75, real skinny, small profiles um, with, you know, one six, one eight jig heads. And you'd actually be surprised at what fish will eat them. Now, some of my biggest fish have been on some of the smallest lures. And I know a lot of you guys out there are the same. Elephants eat peanuts. Um, I just came back from a barra trip and I hooked a barramundi on an Eco Gear BP50, a little tiny brim prawn. And we'll be throwing big baits around all morning and we had no luck. And second class, I hooked up to a barra and got absolutely bent over the rails and smoked. So elephants eat peanuts and everything eats small bits of food. Um, so that's pretty much it for location, location, location guys so uh, I'm gonna wipe this guy down and we'll get on to number two <clears throat> all right guys so number two we're getting closer number two lure selection now like I said I'm not much of a bait fisherman so this whole talk will be based around lure fishing um, lure for me lure fishing for me is just more of a challenge You've got to really be in in your mindset of like what's going on at what time of the year, what lure to throw around, um, and it's a really really good way of wasting a lot of money. Um, also, you did, you know obviously you don't smell like bait when you go home, and and bait's quite expensive as well. If you want to go out, you know every two days you've got to buy a fresh bait, and it can be actually pretty expensive. So anyway, so my number two pointer to help you guys catch more fish is lure selection. Now, I'll quickly run on to winter. I basically said what I was going to say about the big flathead up in the shallows. So I showed you guys some big swim baits and big plastics. So like I said, warmer water, mullet are running, so it's a really good time. If you want to target big flathead and you want to be patient, you could be throwing really big swim baits and plastics up into the shallows for those guys. So I've already touched base on that. Um, also, like I said, a lot of dewfish start pushing up into the system as well. So it's always good to target those turns of the tide. If you can get turns of the tide with low light conditions, early morning, late afternoon, these are the prime times to catch dewfish in the estuaries. Uh, so keep it go to deeper spots um, along rock walls, in front of big jetties, you're looking five to 10 meters of water, um, so quite deep waters. And that's why you want to target the start of the run out and also the start of the run in. So you can actually sit there and you're not moving too fast with the current. So keep an eye on the sounder. If you see a lot of bait and some bigger fish sitting underneath it, stay on top of that 
and just you got to be persistent with them. There is a very short bite window with Jewfish and sometimes they don't even eat at all. So it's a very frustrating time to target them. Um, but the more you, times you get out there and give it a crack, the better chances you're going to have. So in that scenario, also if you don't want to target big flathead up in the shallows with swim baits, um, just work your way up and down any of your local walls. If it's deeper water, it's a very good time to start throwing vibes, fish traps. Um, I've got a couple of lures here for you guys to have a look at. What is up with me and dropping stuff? Come on. My goodness, I think I need another coffee. Another double shot, let's go. Maybe I've had too much, I don't know. I don't know. It's half man, I'm just getting old. So anyway guys, so it's a, if you don't want to target big flathead up in the shallows with swim bait, it's a good time to start throwing these guys around along the break walls in your local system on those tide changes. Um, yeah, just basically Xeric fish traps. I just have a range of different colors. Uh, depends on water clarity and that kind of thing. Um, you know, generally speaking, dirtier water, I do like to throw very bright lures. And then I've also got kind of a natural kind of color there in the Nomad little vibe vertex. So it's a really good time in winter to be thrown around those guys in those Deeper channels of water along break walls, turns of tide, low light periods, also big flathead as well. And they're actually a really good time. You can actually still fish these when there's good tidal flow. So if I've gone past a rock wall, I can see stacks full of bait and there's fish underneath them. I'll go up into the current and I'll let it drift me down and or yeah, you just just jig up and down on the bottom. It's um, a very lazy way of fishing, but it's you can actually pick up pick up some really good quality fish. The old drift and lift we call it. Um, you can catch big flathead that way and you cover a lot of water. And especially if you've got an electric motor, you can just ease out and that kind of thing. So, um, but same thing, like I said, trying to seek to land base here. I got a little bit carried away, forgot that. <laughs> but yeah, if you're walking along a nice rock wall, you can still use these guys too. You might snag them up and lose them a bit. But if you've used the vibes in the deeper, deeper water column, um, you really want to target that slower slower water so it won't get snagged up. If you get snagged up a lot, what's probably happening is the tide is moving way too fast. So you're throwing this out, it's dragging along the bottom, it'll stick on a rock or a log or something and that's how you're getting snagged. If it's slower water, obviously it's a really slow and you're doing more hops, so it's going to be bouncing over the snags. Alright, what else have we got going on here? Um, okay, so we'll touch base on estuary perch. Um, oh, so we'll touch base on estuary perch. So winter time, bass and estuary perch will actually go out, or more estuary perch will go right out into the salt to breed and they become a lot more active and easier to catch. Summertime, they're very, very hard to catch. You'll, they'll be right up in the tops of the creeks, in and around shaded banks, around very, very heavily structured banks and very hard to catch. So in the time, I loved going out into my local system here. I've got a couple of spots that are pretty reliable for them and they're pretty easy to catch. They school up and they'll pretty much just eat anything. So it's just some plastics, guys. Pretty much just any small profile plastic. Um, Z-Man Slim Swims, I've got the 2.75 inch in the Munro's there, little squidgy fish, um, little brim grubs, pretty much any small plastic. If you find schooling EP, is a very good way of catching them. Depending where you're fishing, if it's very rocky and snaggy, very good option with a soft plastic. If it's not too snaggy, you can throw little TT blades and just slowly jig them through the schools and most of the time it'll trigger a bite and once you catch one the whole school will turn on and you'll have a really cool fun session. Um, oh yeah, so and also so winter time for me. Um, if you guys haven't seen it yet, jump on over to Crank Brim Fishing. It's my very first YouTube video. So go over, have a laugh and see how far I've developed over the year of having my YouTube channel. 
Anyway, winter time for me, I love chasing blue nose brim on crankbaits. Um, I don't really know the theory behind it. I just know that the bites are better in the winter on crankbaits. I think because they're a moving bait, they're noisy and the brim just absolutely love them. I seem to catch better quality brim doing this in the winter than I would in the summer chasing brim on little soft plastics. The quality just seems a lot bigger. Um, so yeah, just any kind of um, crankbaits there. I've just got Jackal Chubbies and I'm gonna give these new Berkeley Protec little crankbaits a go. Um, but I've got heaps of Pro Lures. They, the brand's called Pro Lure. Um, they do a fantastic little crankbait, very affordable and a very good range of colors. Um, Atomic do a very good um, crankbait. What I like about them, they've got three different crankbaits that you can choose from. They've got shallow, medium, and deep diving. Obviously, the, just the bigger bib. Same profile lure, 3.8 millimeter. Um, so they're just like a nice little hard body and it's very easy to pick them up at BCF. You can have them in your tackle box. And if you're walking along, target in a bank, um, you're dragging them across the rock walls or wherever you are, land base. Um, you can just obviously see how deep the water is and you can chop and change lure. If your lure is hitting the bottom too much, you can put the medium one on or the shallow diver. Um, they do a great range of um, colors and yeah, I really like the depths. You, can, you know, you can have one crankbait with three different bibs on basically, so. Um, all right. Whew. All right guys, so we've covered lure selection for winter. Now we're quickly gonna touch base on lure selection for summer. So like I said, in summertime, a lot more small white bait will start pushing up into the systems. A lot more prawns become active as well. The water warms with the water, is temperatures right up now. Um, generally in my system, winter generally ranges from about 19 to 21 degrees. And the summer, um, in the high 20s. So, you know, 25, 26, 27 degrees. So that water, war that water temperature is right up now in summer and a lot more smaller profile baits will be getting pushed up, prawns, white bait, up into the system so it's a very very good time um, again to be throwing around smaller profile baits these Munro's in the 2.75 inch in the sub-zero colors are absolutely amazing if you find a bank or a rock wall or wherever you happen to be and you can see a lot of white bait around the bottom of your feet throw one of these on and I guarantee you guys will absolutely clean up they're the most Realistic white bait profile I've ever seen. Um, just a clear profile, and they've just got like a little fleck of blue, a little bit of silver in there. There's not much to them, but they're absolutely amazing. Um, and like I said, you'll catch some big fish too. Um, so, and also, yeah, also everybody knows you get old halt prawns. So, like I said, summertime, a lot, a lot more white bait, a lot more prawns will be pushed up into the system. And also, like I said earlier, full moon equals prawns. If you've got a full moon in your system, throw halt prawns. If it's summer, MMD, splash prawns, a lot more surface action. It doesn't have to be a prawn representation on surface. Anything like a sugar pen, walk the dog, uh, Berkeley 3B dogs, whatever they're called. Pretty much anything flicking on the surface at summertime is going to get eaten. Um, yeah, prawns push up on the full moon a lot more because that tide's a lot higher. So if you're land base, you've got the full moon, and you want to go get some brim, whiting, um, up in the shallows, it's a very, very good time to um, start walking the sandy flats along the mangrove lines and throwing little sugar pens as deep as you possibly can. Um, you know, stand in knee deep water and cast up into the mangroves and flick them out and you'll catch some absolute stonker brim and have some really good fun trying to pull them out of there. Um, all right, else we got? Um, yeah, also summertime, the water's a lot warmer. Obviously the top of the water column is a lot warmer than down below. So it's a really good time to start dusting off the hard body lures. Um, a lot more of the fish will be sitting higher in the water column. So those crankbaits, those minnow lures, for jacks, jackal squirrels, all that type of thing, 
all the fish will start coming off the bottom and actively feeding in that warmer water where the white bait and the prawns are. So it's a really good time to start throwing some hard body lures around and don't be scared to throw them in deep into the snags. Like I said, they're actually pretty snag resistant. Um, it's a lot easier to throw a hard body into a snag than it is a soft plastic because soft plastic will sink right down into it and it'll, you won't be able to get it out. But the hard body will swim along, hit the, hit the snags, float over the top of it and you're on hopefully. Um, so I think that is pretty much lure selection for number two guys. So again, I'll wipe this down and we're going to go to announce the winner first. Just like any good TV program, I've got to leave the best to last. So I'm going to let you guys chew on the nails for another few minutes and I will announce the winner of my lure giveaway. So stay tuned. Alright guys, so just about to announce the winner of my competition, so like I said in my last video, if you haven't seen it yet, the more my channel grows, the more things I can give away, it's just a nice way of me saying thank you to you guys, so I've got a nice big box of heaps of different lures in there that I was going to give away, um, plenty of goodies in there, it's probably about at least $150 worth of gear in there and I'm just giving away just to say thank you to you guys for watching my content, liking, subscribing, on all of that. So, without further ado, drum roll, we'll announce the winner. I was actually gonna have a drum and just roll it, drum roll, but I don't have one, and all I've got is this really smelly towel. It's, it's not good. Pretty much any bloke shed, if there's, if there's a towel in there, it's, it's not gonna be good. Anyway, guys. So the winners of the lure competition is Makaira and Daniel Pignant. Now, they're actually local, which is really, really good for me. So Daniel and his lovely daughter Makaira is, um, I think Makaira is my youngest ever fan. I think she was seven or eight. I can't remember how old she is, <laughs> but yeah. Basically, just um, comment on my video like all you guys did, and I have to choose a lucky winner. And I can't say no to my youngest and my cutest fan, Makaira, and her dad, Daniel. So, we're going to go give her the lures and congratulate her and give her a really cool high five. And um, yeah, it's what fishing is for me and for a lot of people is to get you know, their daughters, their sons, their younger granddaughters, whatever happens to be into fishing. Um, it's a very fun hobby. It doesn't have to be as serious as what I am with lure fishing and right into it. You know, there's nothing wrong with getting the old servo prawns and going down on a bank and catching a few brim. Um, it's those memories that you build and it's just good fun. And it's also a very, very good education lesson as well. You know, they get to catch something that's alive understand where fish come from, what they are, and it's also really good learning possibilities. When you let them go, you can explain to them, you know, it's good for them to breed and for everybody to enjoy an amazing sport and also fresh food forever. Um, you know, I'm big on what's going on in the world and I think it sucks how much commercial fishery just absolutely takes everything. If you guys haven't yet, jump on over to, um, Seaspiracy documentary. It's um, it's a real big eye opener. Um, it's a really hard to watch. I watched it, and some of the scenes are just, it's it's really tough. Um, even if you're not a fisherman, like if you have any any heart at all, like it's it's tough to watch. Um, and it really opens your eyes of how how bad people have ruined the world. Um, and unfortunately, it's just going to keep happening and happening. Um, because it's a massive money industry and it's never going to stop. Um, obviously, um, Sea Shepherd, there's a lot of play people out there trying to stop them and obviously if you support them, I just bought some stickers and some merch off those guys. The more you support them, the more money they can put into their fundings and, you know, fingers crossed that we can at least make a difference because we take way too much of the ocean, we take way too much off the land and it's all because of money. We don't actually need any of this to survive. You know, it's nothing wrong with catch and take home some fish for your family, but when we're just throwing out nets and just 
destroying the ocean, the coral, everything. Um, you know, it's not needed and it's absolutely terrible. Like, yeah. So anyway, guys, <laughs> I got a little bit sidetracked there, but that for me is what fishing is. Fish for the future, teaching other people, you know, just take what you need. Um, enjoy it and have fun. Let the fish go. And um, that's what fishing is for me. So if I can give a box of lures away to an upcoming awesome little fish show, Makara, and her and her dad can share memories and get out there and maybe get into lure fishing and enjoy that type of um, fun, then I'm more than happy to go meet them, say hello to some to my youngest fan, and um, yeah, give out free lures. So congratulations. Uh, to Makara and Daniel and um, thank you to everybody that watched my video and commented and like I said there's going to be heaps of future giveaways, more lures and I don't even know, maybe if I make a big one day I'll give away free boats and free jet skis like uh, a William Powell fish, I don't know. But um, yeah, anyway guys, I'm going to wipe this guy down, so congratulations again and we're going to get on to point, my, my top one top tip to help you guys catch more fish. Alright guys, my number one tip to help you guys catch more fish is, no surprise, you hear it from every single fish show, time on the water. Obviously, the more time you spend out on the water or land-based fishing, the higher the possibility of catching fish is. I have so many people asking me, man, how do you catch so many fish? And maybe I'll, in the future, I'll make another video of actually how many hours roughly per week I fish and what the catch to hour ratio is or something like that. Now, I know life can be busy and we all have jobs, responsibilities, families, mortgages, um, insurances, bad habits, junk food, alcohol, um, the list goes on and on and on. Now for me, I love my fishing. I honestly would be lost without it. Um, anyone that knows me, if I don't go fishing every few days, I literally start going crazy. Um, for me, fishing is all I think about. If I'm at work, it's all I can think about is fishing. Where I want to go to next. When I get home, I'll be straight onto YouTube, watching handsome guys like me fish and talk absolute garbage. Um, I'm at BCF all the time, at my local tackle shop, reading magazines, articles, podcasts, it doesn't stop. It is a full-time thing, it's a full-on obsession for me. It's my passion, it's my hobby, I love it. And I, if without fishing, I wouldn't be who I am. Um, so for me, I make time because of that reason. If I don't go fishing, if I don't go for a bit of a flick, even for an hour, if I've got a spare hour, I go crazy. Um, so like I said, I know everyone's busy, I know everyone's got jobs and everything, but if you have any spare time, just try and get out there as much as possible. Now, people that don't know who I am, I am a chef, um, that's my trade, I've been doing it for about 15 years now. Um, I'm going back to my old job that I was there for a few years, it's just at a local pub, and we get split shifts, so... I get a two to three hour break in the middle of the day. So I will take a fishing rod with me, a little bag with lures, and I'll go fishing on my break. It might be only for an hour or two, but you never know when you're gonna catch a fish. Prime example is down my local. I went under the, one of my local bridges on my break, and I'll even get the lure for you. One second. Don't go anywhere. So I had a little bit of a break, I thought I got my rod, I'll go for a bit of a flick, I think I was there for about an hour, I got down to under my bridge and I was just throwing that little guy around, it's just a little mag draft, they're just like a little soft plastic, the um, cod fisherman, fisherman uses the real big ones for them, they're bloody awesome, they're expensive for what they are, it's just a soft plastic but they work and look absolutely amazing in the water. Um, so yeah, I just went under the bridge and threw this little guy around the pylons there and banged a really, really nice mangrove jack. Now that would never have happened if I didn't go down there and put the effort in to go down there because I never, you never know what's going to happen. Um, the same bridge, I threw a little splash prawn down there um, on one of my other breaks and got another jack on surface as well. So 
it is all about time and water. If you have spare time, take a rod with you in the car. If you think, even if there's an hour, you never know when you can catch a fish. You might get lucky, you might just get snagged up and lose the lure and curse fishing for the rest of your life. But it's all about trying to get out there and give it the best opportunity. Now, I catch so many fish, like I said, I put so many hours into my fishing and you guys only see the highlights there. I've literally just come back from Mondrian. I fished there for four days. I did not catch one single fish. And then I went to another dam for two days. I did not catch a single fish. So you guys get to see all the highs, but the hours that fishermen put in that you guys don't get to see, you guys just see the, the photos on Instagram, the YouTube videos, the, the hours put in of not catching anything is actually really really sad <laughs> if I was to put like I said a fish to hour ratio it would be real bad days off the last two days off me and my mate Dave have been out on my boat all day fishing in my local salt water system my apps told me the fishing is not going to be good at all it's going to be really really hard and it was two days we caught absolutely bugger all only a couple of fish to show for the end of the day but like I said we just love our fishing and even if the phone says, the app say it's not gonna be good, we're still gonna go out and give it a good crack because you never know when it's gonna happen. One more example before I finish this video off. Um, I remember about a year ago, it was winter time and woke up, day off. You guys know what days off are like. Usually you're at work, it's absolutely beautiful weather. You comes to a day off and the wind will pick up, the rain will pick up, it'll hail, there'll be a thunderstorm, everything will go wrong. Um, so it was my day off, woke up and it was windy, and I mean proper windy, it was 25 to 30 kilometers, and it was terrible. And I thought, well, I'm only gonna sit at home and do absolutely nothing, I'm gonna sit at home and watch YouTube videos of other people fishing. And I needed to get out of the house and thought, you know what, bugger it, I'm just gonna go out and I'll find somewhere out of the wind. It was on my boat, so land-based fishing, when the wind is up, depending on the wind direction, it can be very, very hard. Um, obviously, you wanna try and find out spots that you can fish without the wind. But if you've got a boat and it's windy, um, a lot of the time you can find a little bend out of it or up in the creek. Um, but in this scenario, I thought, bugger it, I'm just gonna go out, I'll put the boat in, and it was windy, it was capping everywhere. I thought, what am I doing? And I was only on the water for about an hour, or an hour and a half. Got out, found this little bay, and it was a super high tide, and the water pushed right up into this back bay where the water doesn't normally get to. And I noticed an absolute ton of mullet up in there. It was super, super shallow, it was probably about knee deep water. It was stacked full of mullet, and there was heaps of weed around. Uh, and I thought, bugger it, I'll just um, bite the bullet. And I started throwing this exact lure, actually. Just a little um, evergreen glide bait. Yeah, it's just like a nice little glide bait. Um, just to represent the mullet that was in that bay at that time. And literally, I think I only had a half a dozen casts. I threw it out down near this weed bed. Gave it a couple of little twitches. Paused it and it gored. God almighty, bang. And I caught a 85 centimetre flathead absolute giant on this swim bait here and the, the weather was terrible and I literally pushed myself to get up out of bed and go do that and if I didn't go and put the time on the water I would not have caught that fish obviously I released it got caught some cool photos of it and let it go but you just never know when you're going to catch that fish also a lot of mangrove jack fishing they bite a lot more on terrible days um, some of my best mangrove jack sessions have been just after a flood when the water's a little bit dirty or wind or even rainy days, they just seem to bite better. So even if it's a windy, rainy day, obviously try and get out of the rain if you're land base. If you've got a boat, even better. Um, just put the time and effort in, guys, because you won't catch fish sitting at home watching other people fish on YouTube. It's about getting out there putting time on the water, taking the time, understanding the other two points that I've shown you guys and put it all together and draw yourself a whiteboard and get into it. Um, that's pretty much it guys. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's a bit different. Um, I hope it helps you guys get out there a little bit more and um, a couple of pointers in there for you guys to um, put to practice and hopefully catch more fish. If you guys have any questions or any comments, chuck them down below and I'm more than happy to um, respond and answer any of your questions. Um, also, if you guys don't yet, jump on over to my Instagram. I'll put it on the screen now. Um, I do a lot more day-to-day -day things on there and um, a lot more stories on my Instagram that don't make YouTube. Like my last Mondrian trip, I storied the whole thing. It was just basically me cooking and eating, drinking beer and whinging about not catching fish, but it can be quite entertaining um, because you guys get to see those low points where you know, you don't catch fish all the time. You just got to get out there, time on the water, and use the right lures at the right time. And um, hopefully, you guys can get onto some fish. So, anyway, guys, hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you haven't yet, hit that like, subscribe, um, share, all that kind of good stuff. And yeah, we'll um, get back out there and get on the water very, very shortly. So, I'm going to go give these lures away and um, see that big cheeky smile of hers. And um, yeah, hopefully she gets onto some fish as well with these new lures. So anyway guys, guys, stay tuned for some more fishing and um, thank you very much for watching. And I hope this has helped. If you guys want more of these types of things in the future, let me know. Um, lure talks, I've obviously got stacks full of lures. If you guys are interested in this type of thing, um, you know, it's always good to watch and read a lot more about fishing and the more f you know about fishing. Hi right, guys, just want to say thank you to everyone that liked and subscribed to my channel for the video. Uh, we got Makaira and Dan here. These are going to be the winners of the heaps of lures. So I think she's uh, pretty keen to get in and amongst it. So there's your lure, buddy. What do you say? What do you say? Thank you, high five. Yes, high five. <laughs> I got it up. <laughs> Plenty of goodies there. Look at them all. Look at that. Heaps. Big What's ones, your favourite? Little ones. Jig heads. Jig heads. <laughs> They're good for flathead. There's a flat on them. Big prawns. That's like the one you got on. A little bit bigger though. Yeah. There's what she's looking at. There's like a little pink one in there too. Yeah, look at that little guy. That. Pretty cool. What do you Heaps say? Of goodies. What do you say? <laughs> so what do you say? Thanks, Joel. <laughs> and Sandy Tracks Fishing. Huh? <laughs> You're supposed to say, look out for Makairo's fishing adventures. Oh my god. <laughs> Young YouTuber <laughs> in the making. <laughs> Get a bit shy. <laughs> Maybe if you bring Marlin, you would have been all right. <laughs> Party now. Oh. Well, we're going fishing. You going to sit in there? Yeah, we're going. <laughs>